Hey everybody, I'm CC Trubiak and welcome back to CC's Vinyl Closet. If this is your first time here, well, welcome to my humble abode. And if you're returning, I thank you for coming back for more. CC's Vinyl Closet is where I like to dive deep into the vinyl records of some of my favorite country artists and a lot of new ones too. Take for example today. Today I'm going to be highlighting a couple of records that I have by pioneering country singer Wilma Burgess. Have you heard of her? Well, I certainly haven't before this past year. I'm looking forward to sharing some of my insights and thoughts with you guys. You ready to join? Let's do it, come on. Wilma Burgess, rest in peace, was an American country music singer who rose to fame for a brief period of time in the mid 1960s. Initially, Burgess, who was gifted with a beautiful soprano voice, had no interest in a music career. That is, until music producer extraordinaire Owen Bradley saw her and set out to make her a potential successor to the recently deceased Patsy Cline, whom Bradley had also produced. Wilma Burgess became a part of Nashville's top talent agencies, and in the very early 1960s, she'd perform on the Grand Old Opry, impressing audiences with her teary ballads. But today, for lack of better cliche, we really don't hear a lot about Wilma Burgess, nor did I ever really hear of her growing up in the 1990s. Now, if some rumors that I've read about were in fact true, despite releasing a handful of singles that seemingly are lost to time, she is only now in recent years finally getting her dues as an overlooked trailblazer for LGBTQ artists in the country music industry. You heard me say it right, LGBTQ, country music artists. Her recording career phased out in the 1970s. However, apparently her impact on Nashville nightlife was only beginning. By the late 1980s, Wilma Burgess owned, ran, and performed at Nashville's first women-only bar called The Hitchin Post. Undeniably, Wilma has left her own mark in music history. And I, for one, am here to rejoice in it. Boop, boop. According to my sources, Wilma Burgess released a total of seven studio albums between 1966 and 1982. Now, in my own possession, I've got two 1967 offerings, the first one being Wilma Burgess Sings Misty Blue and Tear Time, both produced by Owen Bradley. Now, because these albums were both released in 1967, I almost felt like I was listening to one double-length album instead of two individual ones. So it made a lot of sense just to listen to them back to back. Production-wise, they sound very much the same. Owen Bradley was a superb producer, and hearing his familiar style of production reminded me so much why I love a lot of Loretta Lynn's early records from the 1960s. I mean, he was a producer of her as well. These Wilma records only reaffirmed my own love for his work. I can hear so many familiar session players, yet I honestly can't confirm any of this for certain because the records lack any liner notes, nor is there any information available online. Which kind of makes Wilma Burgess slightly elusive to me. Mm -hmm. Breaking down each record, I'm going to try to sum up my highlights and takeaways. I'm going to start with Wilma Burgess Sings Misty Blue. This was only her second studio album, which made it all the way to number five on the Billboard charts, which is pretty respectable for a new artist. Now, apparently the song Misty Blue, which was penned by Bob Montgomery, became her biggest hit to date, peaking at number four on the Billboard charts. This song would also become her signature song. This is for you, Wilma. Oh, it's been such a long, long time Looks like I'm getting you off my mind oh, But I can't form just the thought of you Turns my whole world a misty blue Just the mention of the flicker to a flame. I think of things that we used to do. Then my whole world turns a misty blue. 
<laughs> Wilma Burgess sings Misty Blue is a fine record all in all. And yet again, I was pleasantly surprised to find another song written by Bill Anderson that I just loved called The Tips of My Fingers. I reached out my arms and I touched you with soft words. I whispered your name. I held you right on the tips of my fingers, but that was as close as I came. My eyes had a vision of sweetness yielding beneath my command. I held your love on the tips of my fingers, but I let it slip right through. My hand, but I let it slip right through my hands. For one thing, I remember listening to Steve Warner sing this song in the 1990s, and even though I never bought a Steve Warner record and probably haven't heard that song since the 90s, I still remember hearing it. And that's the testament of a great songwriter, in my opinion. Wilma sounds so lovely singing these words. Please check out Wilma's version of that song, The Tips of My Fingers. The accompanying album, called Tear Time, provided a continuation of that sweet, sweet Nashville sound. And I found myself enjoying even more of the selections here. And by that Nashville sound, I mean the sound that Owen Bradley helped establish in the 60s. It's a lush, almost pop music kind of feel to it, just lavish and extravagant production. The title track, Tear Time, written by Jan Crutchfield, was an especially noteworthy track. Tear time starts without morning sometimes night Sometimes morning, all it takes is the smallest thought of you and tears. Time starts crying all night through. What I love so much about the song Tear Time is that it's really enjoyable to hear Wilma take you through this rather feminine sounding emotional experience. And I honestly encourage everybody to check out her version for sure. Tear Time, remember. I also enjoyed so many other tracks on both sides of these old records, including My Sunshine's Gone by Hank Mills or This Is It by Cindy Walker. And interestingly enough, Owen Bradley selects the Lennon McCartney penned yesterday. And throughout my years, I have heard so many countless versions of this ballad, but Wilma's is a standout actually. I believe this falls on both Owen Bradley, whose production of the instrumentation just incorporates a beautiful steel guitar sound that's really effective and very different from what I'm used to hearing for a Beatles song. And of course, Wilma, who sings so tenderly with this lovely restrain. It's just beautiful. It's another song that I recommend. And honestly, who doesn't know the lyrics to Yesterday and who can't find that song comforting? Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. Now it looks as though they're here to stay. Oh, I believe in yesterday, suddenly. I'm not half the man I used to be. There's a shadow hanging over me. Oh, yesterday came suddenly. Why she had to go, I don't know. She wouldn't say. I said, Something wrong now I long for yesterday. All in all, 
I really cannot speak highly enough about Wilma Burgess and my opinions of these two records. I'm certainly happy to have finally discovered this elusive chanteuse. I applaud her for her leaving her mark on the history of country music, and I think that I'll have to eventually seek out these other albums of hers. So there you guys have it. There's the long and the short of my thoughts on Wilma Burgess, pioneering country music singer. Now I, of course, turn the tables to you and I wanna know, have you heard of her? What are your favorite songs? What's another album I should check out? Drop your comments below and stay tuned for next week's episode. Thank you again for tuning in and take good care of yourselves until next time. Bye.